Allah will fulfill His promise. And His promise is not that we will not have sickness, we will not have pain, we will not have challenges and struggle in this life, but Allah will make Islam victorious. That's part of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأوفوا بعهدي وأوفوا بعهدي أوف بعهدكم وإياي فارهبون وآمنوا بما أنزلت مصدقا لما معكم ولا تكونوا أول كافر به ولا تشتروا بآياتي ثمنا قليلا وإياي فاتقون ولا تلبسوا الحق بالباطل وتكتموا الحق وأنتم تعلمون Verses 40 till 42 is a communication and a reminder to Bani Israel. But again, our goal is to learn from those reminders. And here are a few things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of. First and foremost is the importance of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is something that happens a lot. We are very, very ungrateful in general because we take what Allah has given to us uh, for granted. So think about it, just realize whatever we have, you know, people would kill to have those things. People would love to have those things if you compared us to the rest of the world. There's always thousands and millions of people who would love to have what we have, but we just take it for granted. So really pause and think about what are the things that Allah has given us, and we love it, and we, our life would be miserable if we didn't have it. But it's the ability to see, to hear, to walk, access to education, access to technology, fruit, food, uh, shelter, peace, security, so on and so forth. So really appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And that will lead us to fulfill the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tells us that if we do that, right, Allah, is, Allah will fulfill His promise. And His promise is not that we will not have sickness, we will not have pain, we will not have challenges and struggle in this life. But Allah will make Islam victorious. That's part of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And more importantly, Allah will reward us for our efforts, even if we don't see the results of our efforts in this world. Allah will give us the results of our efforts in the hereafter for sure. And obviously there may be some uh, signs and some results and some happiness and some small victories that we may see in our lifetime, but rest assured that we'll definitely see it in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then also tells us and commands the Bani Israel and the same commandment applies to us is not to disbelieve in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down and that is the notion of sometimes what happens is that we know some parts of Islam that we may have learned from our community from our parents and so on and so forth but we just want to stick to it as doors are opening for us as new information comes to us new knowledge comes to us we do not want to change we are afraid of change and that is something that may be problematic because we are not here to worship and please our people and our parents and so on and so forth, rather to, to, to follow the truth wherever it comes from uh, to us. And that is something to continue seeking knowledge, right? Many times we see people coming to the masjid, subhanAllah, the brother's coming, the sister is coming, they're praying five times a day, but they're making mistakes that the Prophet ﷺ has clearly stated in the hadith that that can invalidate your salah. And someone who is ignorant, that's a different situation. But someone who doesn't even spend a little time to seek the knowledge of, Allah, uh, of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is a sad situation to be in. Would we do the same thing when it comes to the matters of our body or our wealth or our worldly affairs? To spend time in seeking knowledge and to get the knowledge of, from Allah, uh, the, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. And then lastly, we'd like to remind what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is to mix up truth and falsehood. And that is something that I have, you know, a pet peeve with a lot of social media influencers. People who may be great at what they do, whether it be business, whether it be trading, whether it be public speaking or whatever, and they are Muslims, well, what they end up doing is they start commenting on Islam and uh, issues that are related to Islam. And they, they can do it if they have studied, but you see them using logic that is so faulty and they would use logic which doesn't make sense and they can lead, mislead people about the matters of Islam. So my advice to those people is to be careful of when they, when they start stepping outside their lane and my advice for the audience is that look, you go to the experts of, for, of, for, for the field that they're experts in. So if you're getting trade uh, advice or ad investment advice or legal advice from someone, 
you know, seek that. But when he or she starts talking about religion without backing it up, without having any education or validation into it, be careful and do not mess up your religion. Lastly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us about that exclusively we should be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean? And many times there is a contention, right? You don't want to do something or you want to do something and you know that Allah would like you to do it, but you either do not do it or you do it just to please people and displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why are you pleasing people? Because you have some hope that if I please them, I'll get a promotion, I'll get a business contract, I'll get more money, I'll get happiness and so on and so forth. So always think about it, who are we trying to please in, in a situation which would displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.